This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel. And uh, with volatility been really high, both on the daily chart and the weekly, which I talk about on the Friday update, um, I wanted to go through a specific day trading pattern. Uh, when the volatility is high on the daily chart, tends to be a good period for day trading. So I want to give an example. And when I, I want to show the short side on an index like the QQQ because I want you to understand how things shift a little bit. The key thing we're going to talk about is how uh, the MACD relates to the zero line and how we can use a simple method to get in line with the market in these types of trades. All right, let's go ahead and get going. Now, if you want to learn some of these, uh, more about these techniques, I would suggest uh, starting with the book. It's at rablestockresearch.com forward slash book. Also, if you like the content, please hit that uh, like button and also subscribe. Okay, I've got the QQQ up. I've got a five minute on the right and a uh, one minute chart on the left. All right. And uh, this kind of brings me back. Uh, I, I spent a, about two or three years focusing on this five minute and one minute, uh, especially when I was spending a lot of time doing day trading. Um, I found it to be, uh, I think it's a good, if you're really dedicated to trading inner day. I think it's a good starting point for you. Now, you might find that it gives you a little bit too many trades. Um, and if that's the case, you can back off to a 10 minute and a two minute. Um, but uh, just having these two time frames side by side should offer you plenty of opportunities if you have the QQQ, the Spider, the IWM, and maybe two or three of the um, most volatile and active uh, ETF uh, sector uh, indexes or whatever. So you could do that. Um, but now look at the way this is set up. And, and the other side of this is, is that if you're not going to day trade, that's fine too. The, the details I'm going to give you today will apply to longer term timeframes. There's some really important things I think you want to take away from this. Some of it is exclusive to interday, uh, but a lot of it applies to uh, to any time frames. All right. Now, what I want to show is this period here in the um, in the queues where it reversed to the downside, um, took out this prior low, showed pretty good strength, enough strength to cause the ADX to climb above 25. All right. This gray line is a 25 line. Now, if you're day trading, one of the simple simple things that you can do to improve your day trading, in my opinion, is to only trade when the higher time frames ADX is above 25, all right? So I'm talking about trend trading, meaning I'm looking for a trend in a specific direction, either down or up, all right? And I'm playing pullbacks in the direction of the trend. If you're gonna do that, I would suggest making sure that ADX on the higher time frame gets above that uh, key 25 level. All right. And then it's kind of like game on from there. All right. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to take every trade, but that's the only time I would be interested in taking trades if I get a setup. All right. Now, let's look at this uh, specific pattern as we drop down, show a lot of strength, kind of finish it, finish off the decline of this move with a big red bar. And then we start the little rally phase back towards the 18, which is now declining and has now crossed below its 40. Now, during this rally, we get MACD to pinch in to the signal line, All right? Now, here's the key. The red line is the um, signal line. And when that crosses down below zero, we've essentially kind of flipped the trend, at least for now, potentially. Now, sometimes you just get a little uh, uh, overrun, and that's not exactly the same thing. But in this case, we get a strong move through. And then what we're looking for is a rally up to this line, but not crossing over. All right. That to me shows this pretty strong momentum. And actually the momentum came before the rally because this, this move to the downside got the MACD so far away from its signal line that even a pretty substantial rally, a one, two, three, four, five bar rally kept the, uh, MAC, the MACD stayed below its signal line. So I know there's pretty good strength in this move when I have that. Now, I know I've got a pretty good period to be potentially taking a trade. And now I know I've got pretty good momentum on this higher time frame and it's holding the signal line. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is show you that uh, this was at the uh, middle of the day on 8.7. So if I go back to over here on the left, 
This is the period, middle of the day, all right? Now, I know a lot of guys will tell you not to trade middle of the day. However, what I have found is that my patterns can happen at any point. They don't typically happen in the first 45 minutes, um, and they don't, even in the first hour in a lot of cases, and they don't typically, I don't typically recommend taking them in the last half hour, 45 minutes. But anything inside of that, I'm I'm okay with, assuming you have the criteria that I'm talking about, which is momentum, all right? There are a lot of times when the market does nothing all morning and then starts its move right around noon. So don't assume it's never the same. That's what makes uh, trading and day trading especially so difficult. But if we have this, it's game on, like I say, if we have that in place. All right. Now we get the pinch on this time frame. Now here's the point I wanted to make. As this is moving up and rallying, if you notice on the smaller time frame, it's above its signal line. The MACD is holding above the signal line. Now the moment this turns down and breaks below its signal line, it's game on. We have a match. We're now below on that time frame and we're below on this time frame. We have a match in MACD. This is a very simple method to stay on the right side of the market and, and, and basically only trade in the direction of this. This is the higher time frame. So we're only going to take short trades. All right. And then we're only going to look for potential entries when this MACD is in line and, and moving to the upside. Now, I'm keeping this simple. There are times when you'll have divergence and you want to play a little bit more aggressively. Um, we can talk about, you could look at, my, if you take my course, I give you a lot of details in that regard. Now, we don't want to just put this on an island and use it by itself. All right. We want to go and look at the price pattern and look for our one, two, three, one, two, three three reversals all right we definitely want to be on the lookout for that the other thing we want to be on the lookout for are big red bars all right these are the two potential entry bars for me if i'm looking at taking this trade to the downside and i want to be aggressive i'd probably look at this and the reason is is that it came inside the zone between the 18 and the 40 and then rallied out all right and then this red bar this big red bar rebroke the 18 and that coincided let me make sure I'm looking at that. Yeah, that coincided with the MACD crossing back down the signal line, all right, through its signal line. So that's a really great entry point for someone who's a little bit more on the aggressive side. Now, if you want to be a little bit more conservative, you'd wait for, and the reason why you would be, <clears throat> potentially, uh, is you want to wait for a test of the 18 because we had overrun. You see how this overrun the zero line? We're above the zero line. So in that case, you have the option if you want to take that second entry. So this, the first entry would be coming down through like that. Once that doesn't happen and we get a rally, now to me, this is sort of like that second chance opportunity. It's also a counter, well, no, it's not counter parallel lines, but if you can see how this is kind of forming this little parallel pattern right before we get this uh, red bar. All right. So when we have that, We've got the potential setup. Now, if you wanted to wait for a failure at the 18 and then the next red bar crossing down through the 40, that's a very good entry as well. It's a little bit more confirming. And um, yeah, you're entering on this bar here instead of this bar here, but that's okay. It's really okay because keep in mind, when we have this kind of strength and we have failure here to get back above the signal line, I am expecting this to go to a new low or I wouldn't take this trade. I would not take this trade if I only thought it could get to here. So it's okay if it go if if you're getting in on this bar because we're expecting it to go to a new low. All right. So that's how I think when I'm trading. I'm okay with taking that second entry, especially if let's say you just came back from lunch or something and you weren't here for this and then you see this develop, you know you do have another quality entry right here. All right. Now, one of the things I do want to point out is during this rally, we had no strength in the sellers. You see all uh, the buyers, you see the strength in the sellers on the way down. That's what this red is causing the ADX to move up. And then during the rally phase, green can't get really above 25 and it certainly isn't helping ADX go anywhere. And that's good confirmation. All right. Now, we get a move to the downside. If you notice, the MACD crosses over the signal line and then comes back and tests and kind of holds it and then makes a new high here and then crosses down again. Well, I, I prefer to have signals a little bit closer to the zero line, but we are sitting right at the 18. All right. Now, 
I, I'm not really going to focus in on this uh, setup in terms of um, details or anything because this is the lower time frame. All right. I'm not going to take trades solely based on the smaller time frame. I'm only going to take trades that's set up on the higher time frame. I will say this, this is a reverse divergence setup. This is making a higher high, this is making a lower low, another signal from my book. Uh, it's a good one to know. Um, it's it's not, again, I wouldn't consider this a, a, an entry signal because this is the lower time frame. Uh, but I did wanna point that out. All right, let's look at the, uh, the next signal. We get a move to the downside and then we get a rally back and look at how we pinch. Now, what I've talked about is you, sometimes you get a pinch inside the range before we break down. But then once we break down and start a new trend, I look for two um, pinch plays. All right. And then after that, I'm looking for a more complex correction or a reversal. All right. So you got to get that ingrained in your head. You get basically bear flag, bear flag, and then a uh, more complex correction. Get that in your mind. Both directions. Once you cross the zero line, you can get a couple of signals, and then we're looking for some, either a reversal or a consolidation that leads to more downside. Now, one of the things that can save you, again, is just watching this ADX and knowing kind of where it's situated. Once it reaches above the 55 mar 50 mark, you know you're probably getting a little late as well. But that combination, uh, when you have already had two pinch plays, and then you're getting a third, and this is already at 50, you got to be pretty careful. All right, so um, we've got this rally. Now, I wanted to point this out because this is definitely different. You see how this made a move up and then pulled back and held the 18 and then made a new high here. Do you see how that didn't happen on this time frame? That, that took place back here, but not when it was actually topping out, when it was reversing. So um, you don't know that when it's taking place. This actually could have looked like, this, this here looked like it could have been right here. But that's why the moment we hit a new high, which was on this bar right here, we're going to draw on our trend line. And again, when uh, guys who have taken my course know that this is a trigger one, a trigger one, and it's a zero line reversal with low ADX. And that means I can take this uh, trend line signal break, meaning I don't have to wait for the close. I don't have to wait for a big red bar. I don't have to wait for an opposing trend signal. I can just take the big red bar signal and be a, a seller at that point. I can short do a short at that level. All right. So um, I think these are uh, pretty important attributes. The only other thing I'm going to say is that when I'm day trading, I probably am trying to catch this one leg. And I'm trying to catch this one leg. I'm not really trying to get in and stay in for the whole day. So what I do is, in, in my approach, is as this is dropping and this is moving down, a lot of times this is going to be very late to show divergence. So I use the red DI and I'm watching for signs of divergence. So you can see this is the first time the red DI made a lower high in the move. And that was on this bar right here at the bottom. All right. Um, I didn't draw that exactly, but I can tell you for a fact that is the low bar is where this showed the diversion. So what I do is I lower the stop really tight above that bar. And if it takes it out, great. If it doesn't take it out and continues to the downside, I keep uh, lowering until I get stopped out. Or if this turns, so let's say I keep lowering the stop and then this actually red the eye actually breaks to a new high. Then I stop trailing this, I stop trailing bar by bar and see if I can stay in for longer. Um, on this trade to the downside, we had a move down, it rallied up, came back down, we got divergence for the first time. I would have been stopped out here. Yeah, it ended up going lower, but I don't I don't care about that. When I'm day trading, I'm trying to play for a, uh, I'm basically trying to stay in until I feel like the, uh, the momentum has slowed or reversed. And uh, that's pretty much it. And I'm trying to get in and get out and not really turn it into some long uh, trade. All right. Uh, so hopefully this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.